I love coffee because I think it is almost a universal truth amongst people. It's the way that people start their day. It's a way to bring a sense of community to people. And it's something that we can all come together over. There's no political divisions, there's no religious divisions. I don't think there's another product out there that has that same type of impact as much as coffee does. New Mexico Pinion Coffee was founded in 1994. The original owner was a gentleman by the name of Jim Franco. He came from New Jersey, learned how to roast coffee from a local roaster. He wanted to start a coffee and bookstore. He was looking for a coffee to brew and serve at his bookstore and just wasn't happy with anything that was currently on the market. So he bought a 15 pound peanut roaster Roasted out of the back of his 1950s red pickup truck, along with his dog, D. Calf, down by one of the UNM bookstores. He played with a few different flavor blends, a few different coffee bean blends, and then at one point he made the decision to just throw some roasted pinon nuts in his roasted coffee. He would source pinon through local Native Americans that would harvest it on their tribal lands. They would come into Albuquerque, sell it out of the back of their pickup truck, the whole idea was to give that coffee a sense of place and a unique flavor. Won some awards at state fairs. We got mentioned by the New York Times as one of the top gourmet food companies in America. He eventually sold the company and moved out of town. The second owner was a gentleman by the name of Stephen Wolf, who continued to drive things forward. Picked up some national accounts with Trader Joe's continue to build the brand and the presence locally within the state. He eventually sold to the third and current ownership group, which is the Bassett family in 2008. The company really started to see monumental growth. At the end of 2017, Trader Joe's moved forward with a new grocery plan. They wanted to make sure that everything was a Trader Joe's brand product on their shelves. And as they redid the coffee and tea category, our product was one that hit the editing floor. It caused all of us to really pause and think outside the box of what we've been doing to this point to ensure that we can continue to grow and thrive. We had to be willing to innovate. We had to be willing to think about new products. How do we bring those to the market? How does that diversify our revenue streams? How do we take our normal road show that we would do in these stores and put it in a digital platform? We looked at that as an opportunity instead of a detriment. We saw that we not only could continue to thrive, but we really grew the product through the ability to put more time and develop other relationships and really saturating our local market. As we grew, we came more and more under the watch of the FDA. The FDA doesn't like what they call wild harvested ingredients. One of the biggest implications of that was we were no longer able to co-roast natural pinon nuts with our coffee because there was no lot traceability. We had to work with several flavor producers to develop a proprietary all natural pinon flavoring that we could coat the coffee with Almost all other flavored coffees in the entire country are flavored with artificial ingredients or a mixture of natural and artificial ingredients. We felt that it was a worthwhile investment and it's definitely been good and helped us to continue growing. We really are still a very homegrown company. Everyone who works here is from New Mexico and really loves it and really cares about what we do in our products. When we have New Mexico on our label, I feel that we have an obligation to employ a workforce that is diverse and represents the state and the community where we come from. It feels like home and it feels like New Mexico. How unique is that, right? You don't get that from most places and that's really fun to be a part of a company that is gonna put New Mexico more on the map, which I think is amazing.